Hi everyone, it's the Math Sorcerer here. In this video, we're going to discuss linear differential equations. A linear differential equation is one that can be written in this form, dy dx plus p of x times y equals f of x. And so to solve a differential equation like this, you compute something called the integrating factor, which is mu of x, and it's equal to e to the integral of p of x with respect to x. Let's go ahead and do an example right away. Solve dy dx plus x times y equals zero. Let's work through it. Solution. First step is to make sure that it matches the form which you see here on the screen. In particular, you want to make sure there's a one in front of dy dx, and there is. Using matching, we can see that p of x is going to be equal to x in this case. So we're ready to work out the integrating factor, which is mu of x. So mu of x is equal to e to the integral of p of x dx. But our p of x is x, so it's just x dx. This is equal to e, and here we use the power rule. It's really x to the first power, so we add one to the exponent and divide by the result. It'll be x squared over two. x squared over two. You don't have to write the plus c. You can, but it's not going to affect your answer. So generally, when you're doing these problems and you find your integrating factor, which is mu of x, you don't write the plus c. So mu of x is equal to e to the x squared, I'm going to write it like this, over 2. I'm going to put this in a box because it's important. All right, so the next step, which I didn't tell you, I'm just going to show you now, is you're going to take mu of x and you're going to multiply your differential equation by mu of x. We're basically going to multiply both sides by the integrating factor. Let's carefully do that. So we have e to the x squared over 2 times dy dx plus e to the x squared over 2 times xy equals e to the x squared over 2 then times zero. So the right hand side is just going to be zero. I'm just going to go ahead and write it one more time just to make sure that right hand side is zero so it looks a little bit better. So we have e to the x squared over 2 dy dx plus e to the x squared over 2 xy and that's equal to zero. So here is the most important step in the entire problem. Something really amazing happens when we multiply by this mystical quantity known as the integrating factor. This entire left hand side here always becomes ddx of, and it's always your integrating factor, which in our case is going to be e to the x squared over 2 times the function you're trying to find. We're trying to find y, so times y. Always, this is always going to happen. Okay, so always, you'll always get ddx of, and it's going to be mu of x times y. Okay, it's always going to happen. So, whatever your mu of x is, you put that here. In our case, it was e to the x squared over 2, and your unknown function. And I say that because sometimes you have other variables, like you might have r you're looking for, or you might have z or w. It just depends on what variables are being used in the problem. We should check. Let's check that this is true. And again, this is from memory. It's always just ddx, which is the derivative of your integrating factor times your unknown function. Let's check. In order to check, we should take the derivative of this. So recall the product rule. If you have a function f and you multiply it by a function g and you take the derivative, think of f as your first function and g as your second function. It's the derivative of the first times the second plus the first times the derivative of the second. That's the product rule from calculus. So if we apply that here to this particular problem, it's the derivative of the first. The derivative of e to the x is e to the x. So we have e to the x squared over 2 times the derivative of the inside. That's a chain rule. So that's 2x over 2. So this is the derivative of the first times the second plus the first, which is e to the x squared over 2. 
a small two there. There, we got to fix that. There we go. X squared over two times the derivative of the second, which is dy dx. Again, derivative of the first was a chain rule. The derivative of e to the x is e to the x. Here it's e to the x squared over two times the derivative of that inside function times the second plus the first times the derivative of the second. And so if you look at what's happening here, what you have here in your DE, it's exactly what you have. You see here we have e to the x squared over two xy. We've got that, boom. And then here we have e to the x squared over two dy dx. We've got that, boom. So it's perfect. It's really, really nice. So again, you should always check. Most of the time you can check in your head. This time the derivative required a chain rule, so I wrote it out. But yeah, always integrating factor unknown function. So what do you do next? You have to get rid of this derivative. So to get rid of the derivative, you integrate. So instead of putting an integral sign, which is going to clutter the problem, I like to write integrate. And then we just integrate both sides. So here you're going to get e to the x squared over 2. That, that exponent's always hard to write. <laughs> and this is equal to, wow, well, we're integrating 0. So you're just going to get a constant, which I'll call c. Right, because if you differentiate a constant, you get zero. So when you integrate or anti-differentiate, you're going backwards. So integrating zero gives you a constant. So we just have to solve for y now. So we can simply divide both sides by e to the x squared over two. So divide the left-hand side by e to the x squared over two. Divide the right-hand side by e to the x squared over two. These cancel, so we have y equals c over e to the x squared over two. And you can leave it like that, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring it upstairs to make the exponent um, negative so it looks better. So C, E, the negative x squared over 2. And that would be the solution to this differential equation. So very powerful technique. Let's go ahead and do another example just so you can get better at this. Solve x times dy dx plus 3y equals 1. Let's carefully work through this solution. So in this particular example, we're going to need to do some work before we compute the integrating factor. Recall that the form we use is this one. It's dy dx plus p of x times y equals f of x. So in this particular problem, we have an x in front of a dy dx, and in our form, we only have a one in front of the dy dx. So we need to get rid of the x. As our first step, we're going to divide everything by x. Divide by x, divide by x, divide by x. These go away, and so we get dy dx plus, here we have 3y over x. I'm going to write that as 3 over x times y, just so we can identify our big P. And that's equal to 1 over x. So we see here that big P of x is, in this case, 3 over x. So now we can compute the integrating factor. Recall the formula for the integrating factor is mu of x equals e to the integral of big P of x dx. This is the formula we use to compute mu of x, which is called the integrating factor. This is equal to e to the integral of 3 over x dx. The natural log of x is going to come about from this because if you integrate 1 over x, you get the natural log of the absolute value of x. And the 3 hangs out. This will be 3 natural log absolute value of x. Now we can use the power rule to bring the 3 upstairs. So this is e to the ln absolute value of x cubed. This is the absolute value of x cubed, which is just x cubed. You can drop the absolute value. Just assume that x is positive, no big deal. So we have mu of x is equal to x cubed. So this is our integrating factor. So recap, you want to make sure it's written in this form, dy dx plus p of xy equals f of x. Then you want to compute your integrating factor, which is mu of x equals e to the integral of p of x dx. We have mu of x equals x cubed. So now we're going to multiply our differential equation, this one, the one we wrote in the correct form, by x cubed. So let's go ahead and carefully do that. So multiplying the entire DE by x cubed, we have x cubed dy dx, and then plus x cubed 
times 3 over x, y, equals x cubed times 1 over x. Notice I didn't skip any steps. I just pretty much wrote an x cubed in front of each term. I think that's important to do. Just be careful when these problems. It's really easy to mess up. So this is going to be x cubed dy dx. Here we're going to get some cancellation. Um, we have three copies of x here with the x cubed, so we're going to lose one copy. It's going to leave us with plus 3x squared y. And this is equal to, same thing here, we're just going to get x squared. And this is where something magical happens every time. So all of this is always going to be, always, it's always d dx of mu of x times y. Okay, it's always your integrating factor times your unknown function. So in this particular case, it's d dx of, so our mu of x was x cubed, and our unknown function is y. And then over here we have x squared. And as always, you should check, even if just mentally. I'll go ahead and show the work for checking. We'll call the product rule. If you have f times g and you want the derivative, think of f as your first function and g as your second. It's the derivative of the first times the second plus the first times the derivative of the second. So in our particular case, it'll be the derivative of x cubed. That's the derivative of the first times the second plus the first, which is x cubed, times the derivative of the second, which is dy dx. And if we compare this with our differential equation, it's exactly what we have on the left-hand side. So this is equal to this. It always works every single time. It's always. If you're wondering why it's a, you can derive it, um, it's really interesting. It's kind of like a forced derivation. Anyways, we need to get rid of the d dx. So I'm just going to put integrate instead of having to write the integral sign because that clutters the problem. So integrating both sides, the d dx goes away. So we get x cubed y equals, here we can use the power rule. It's x squared. So we add one to the exponent and divide by the result. So two plus one is three. And then we divide by three. And we add our beautiful constant of integration. Very nice. And now we can just divide by x cubed. So if you divide this by x cubed, it's going to cancel. So you're just going to get one third. And then dividing the c by x cubed, you get c over x cubed. I'm going to leave the answer just like that. That would be the solution to the differential equation. Hopefully after watching this video, you have a better idea of how to solve first order linear differential equations. If you think this video has been helpful, leave a comment, subscribe, and all that other good stuff. Until next time, good luck and take care.